The ladies in India dress like that. You know, I've been coming to the U.S. for 19 years now. And this is the first time in all these 19 years I've seen all the ladies from the young children up to the elderly so beautifully, modestly dressed. So it makes me feel like I want to come again. You know, I remember several years ago when I was, uh, first time I went to Lancaster, California. And the first night that I got up to speak, I saw a group of young people, maybe about 50 of them. They were so, they were all dressed. Oops, sorry. They were all dressed quite indecently, as if like they were going to the beach. Very short shorts, very short shorts, and singlets. So when I went up to the pulpit, I looked at them and said, this is not a beach. This is a house of God. As soon as I said that, those 50 people stood up and walked away. Doesn't bother me. One good thing is, they didn't belong to the church. So the pastor wasn't offended. <laughs> you know, we must learn how to come before God decently and orderly dressed. If, if that is not important, God would not have given explicit instructions to Moses how the high priest or the priestess should be dressed. Why must he give so explicit instructions how the priest should be dressed from top to bottom? Inner, inner cloth, inner rope, and an external rope. Every instruction, not even the sweat of his flesh should touch the outer garment so that he should be holy, clean. If dressing is not important, why did God ever bother to give Moses all those detailed instructions? It is important, you know. You come and stand before God. You look orderly, decently, and beautiful. Right? So we must learn this. Unfortunately, there's so much of flesh in the Western church. The Easterners are not any better, you know, they are catching up with the West. All their clothes are getting lesser and lesser. So there's something good news for you. You're not that bad. <laughs> anyway, when we all go to heaven, you all will dress like how I am dressed. <laughs> So better get ready.